Hi, everyone. Welcome to the webinar today on remote job interviews, what to expect and how to prep. Um, I'm excited about this. I've honestly only done one remote job interview in my life. So I'm interested to hear um, your perspective, Leah, who is our guest today. And so we'll be um, getting into kind of, we'll, we'll zoom out and talk about the general process of remote work um, job interviews, and then kind of go into each leg of the journey, um, post, or sorry, pre, during, and post job interviews. Um, I'm going to introduce Leah um, in a second here, but before we do, I just want to talk about today's session, the format. Um, like I said, we're going to do a pretty casual fireside chat. Um, it'll be about a 20-25 minute discussion, and then we'll have about 20 to 25 minutes afterwards for your question, for you to have a chance to ask your questions as well. Um, I also want to um, do this poll, just so set up this poll here for you to answer, just so we know who we're speaking to. We want to make this as relevant as possible for you, um, whether you've done a, a remote interview before um, or, or whether you haven't. Um, and then what else do I have to say here? My notes here. Um, yeah, I think that's it, the guidelines. Oh yeah, for the questions at the end, be sure to please, um, you can, you know, as we're discussing, feel free to use the chat and I'll be checking it regularly just to make sure if you wanna join in and, and chime in on the chat, feel free to. And um, for the question and answer period at the end, um, use them in the chat or um, pop them in the Q&A dialogue. It just it might be easier for us to see them in the Q&A box there. So it seems like for the most part, everyone, most people here have gone through the experience of a remote job interview before and, and a few people here haven't. So that's great, that's exciting. And most people here have, are looking for a remote job and, and a few people aren't. Okay, that's good to know, thank you. I'll just leave that open for a bit here. Okay, so as I mentioned, our guest today is Leah Nobler, who is the Director of Talent Acquisition at Help Scout. And if you haven't heard of Help Scout, um, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with Help Scout, um, they are a remote first tech company and they are a help desk software um, that, so they create a tool that's basically improves um, the customer service experience um, and yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm a fan of Help Scout. I really like following you guys on Twitter and just seeing the content you guys push out. It's it's helpful for us um, as, a, as I, I'm also involved in customer support. So it's, yeah, it's really helpful. Um, so prior to um, this position, she used to work uh, at, in um, higher education, used to be a public um, school teacher, sorry, in New York City. And now you're currently, as we already know, uh, you were, you're in Boston and you have been working remotely for Help Scout for about five years now. Exactly. And it was five years last month. Woo! Wild. That's, that is wild. And you've grown Thank the you. team from 20 to 110. And you love talking about inclusivity, diversifying tech, and Beyonce, which I have to acknowledge, <laughs> if you say you're a fan of Beyonce in your company public bio, I think that's, you know, a big commitment. And I also, mm -hmm. as a fan of Beyonce, really respect that. Thank you. I'm ready to make that commitment. <laughs> right? In public. I'm, I'm yeah. out about my Beyonce love, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so thank you again for being here. Really appreciate you know, you spending your time with us and just giving us and shedding some more information on this interview process. And obviously you have a lot of experience in conducting interviews and managing that process. So, um, yeah, do you want to start, how should we, do you want to start kind of zoom out and sure. overall process? Um, if I say I've never had a job and I've never gone through that process before, what, uh, and I'm curious to know, I want to know what the general process is, like, higher picture, higher, you know, kind of thing. How would you explain that to me? Sure. Um, well, I mean, it's different for every company. Every company has their own hiring process. Um, and hopefully if they're, you know, a really great company, they make it pretty clear what the process is. Um, you can also do some digging on Glassdoor. Um, folks who leave like, you know, reviews of the interview process will share, you know, what they went through. Um, but a great company has a really consistent interview process for all of their roles. 
Um, and, you know, for example, on Help Scout, for us, we, on our careers page, we publish what the process is. So anyone who's applying for a job, you can see what to expect. And we think that's just a nice way to, you know, help candidates understand what to prepare for and to put them at ease and to sort of know where they are in their journey. Because applying to jobs is hard. It's exhausting. All the folks on the call right now who are applying for jobs, like I'm sending you all my support and good wishes. I know it's, it can be really hard. Um, and so, you know, a remote interview is going to be like this. It'll, you'll be on Zoom or some sort of video tool and you'll probably talk to one person or a few people. And, and then you'll hopefully, you know, at some point probably have a take home project of some kind or a skill assessment or some other way besides just a, a verbal interview to sort of assess skills. Um, and then if you make it through that, hopefully they're asking for some references and then making an offer. So it typically, it, it does mirror what happens if you can go in person and meet people. But, you know, the big difference, I think, is there's no on-site day. I think a lot of co-located companies have this big day where you come and you're there for like hours and hours and meet with a bunch of people and have lunch and tour the office. And, and there's none of that, which I think is kind of great. There's, that's, that's an exhausting day. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of cuts out that unnecessary energy wasted and focuses really on what's needed. You're just, you're both the exactly. candidate and the company are interviewing each other and seeing if it's a, it's a right fit. Mm -hmm. um, in our last webinar with uh, Caro from Skill Crush, um, she mentioned, who's awesome, um, she mentioned that uh, the goal of your application, your resume, your cover letter, all of that is to get you an interview, not to necessarily get you your job. Obviously, you want the job, so you're applying for it. But the, the, really, the goal of your resume and your application is to land you an interview. Are there any, like, and then also hiring managers, remote hiring managers, sift through hundreds, if not thousands of applications. So what kind of applications actually land an interview? Yeah, I think that's a, a the million dollar question. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think for us, what we really pay a lot of attention to is all of our roles have short answer questions. So yes, we, you know, look at resumes, but I'll be honest, those are uh, like the afterthought for me. I am scrolling down straight to read your short answer questions. And there, you know, we always ask, you know, why do you want to work at Help Scout? And a lot of people write pretty generic things and the ones that really catch my eye are ones that have done some research know something about help scout and like can really convey and convince me that like they're not just applying to a ton of jobs they actually really want this job at our company and and that just you know shows they're really excited and and have done some of their homework um i think it also for a remote company and a remote team especially we rely so much on written communication that the short answer questions is also a great way for me to assess someone's writing skills and their spelling and grammar and attention to detail. And, you know, it's, it's not a hundred percent, but like if you can, you know, communicate well through your short answer questions, you're likely going to communicate well in Slack and in, you know, whatever else you need to do for that role at our company. Um, so really, really putting, putting your heart and soul into those and just answering whatever those questions are in a, in a nice thorough way. And like being yourself, you don't have to obviously like pretend, if it's, if it's a good fit and you have the, you know, experience, it should be able to, you should be able to make that case, I think, pretty clearly. Um, a lot of things that I think people shouldn't do, please don't put your photo on a resume. Like, I see a lot of that. And I think maybe it's different in different countries, too, like what norms are. But if you're applying for U.S.-based company jobs, don't, I don't think you need a photo. That, to me, feels very distracting. Um, a lot of folks spend a lot of time on their resume putting like, you know, like design elements and things. You don't need that. I, I don't, even if for a design role, I'm not, you don't have to, you know, go off the deep end trying to make it look super pretty. I just want it to be easily understood and clear. Um, and, and just sort of, you know, I think explaining what, what it is that you do. How do you add value um, to this company and, and not just your skills to like, you know, if you're an engineer, not just like the coding that you're able to do, but just also talk about like, if you're collaborative, I think, you know, they call it soft skills, but I think that is just as important, especially in a remote team. And right now, you know, I know it's the job market's even tougher. I think things you can do to stand out is, is great. So we've had in the past folks apply and they've made videos and, you know, have been really creative about showcasing their work. And then like talking about Help Scout, um, a great tool to use is Loom. 
um, and you're able to like, you know, record showing, you know, a web, like a website, whether it's your portfolio or whether it's maybe something about the company and you can record a video walking through like why you love these things about the company, all of that stuff just, you know, goes the extra mile. It's not essential, but it helps you stand out. Yeah, that's, I couldn't agree more. That's, that's really great. It's, it's to kind of reiterate what you're saying, kind of keep each item as it should be. A resume is your resume, keep it clean, show your value, your cover letter, showcase that you have researched the company. Um, and then kind of these, those additional things that help you stand out are like the video and then, you know, using kind of those tools to help boost your application and not mm -hmm. distract from it, if that mm -hmm. makes sense, right? Yeah, just uh, creative ways to make you stand out aren't a bad thing, it, you know, right? Like if we're looking at hundreds of resumes or applications and you have something that's we don't see often, I'm going to click that link and look at it. So it's worth a try. 100%. Okay, so anything else to add about kind of general pic big picture of interviews? Kind of maybe the state of interviews even right now? Has anything shifted since the our world? Yeah. I mean, everything has shifted, honestly. I think, yeah. you know, we all are at home and have other folks in our homes. And, you know, I think there's just a new level of like realness to things, to be quite honest. You know, if like your kid runs in on a call, it's not the end of the world. Like you're a human being, that's great. Don't, you know, let that fluster you. Hopefully the person interviewing you finds that charming and that's great and you move on. You know, that shouldn't, that doesn't count against you that you have, a life happening um, and just yeah I just think there's so much happening right now in the world that it's it's if to also be spending all this energy trying to find a job again as I said my I extend a lot of empathy to everyone on the call job job searching right now yeah totally it's it's a lot <laughs> yeah um, so I think where we sh we where we can head next is um, so you've landed an interview yay um, mm -hmm. You get that email, you get that notification saying, you know, let's set up an interview. Let's chat. Um, let's chat. Yeah. What are the, what, what would you do next? How, how can you prepare for an interview? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds like some folks on the call already had remote interviews. So, you know, hopefully you've done this, but you got to test out all of your tech. You got to make sure you're set up you know where you're going to take the call, you know how you're going to take the call and what like tools and equipment you need. So likely it's over Zoom, but if it's Google Hangouts, whatever it is, test it out in advance. You got to practice. You don't want, you know, the moment to come for the interview and it all kind of craps out on you. That's like the worst feeling and there's no need <laughs> to add that anxiety and stress to something that can already be full of anxiety and stress. So practice right. in advance, Zoom some friends, you know, test it out. And, you know, if you know that the interview is at 2 p.m., have a call at 2 p.m. on a different day so you kind of know what light is happening or not, you know, if the room has windows, like little things like that that I think people don't always think about. Um, it's always great to do. And then I just have to urge everyone, please don't do any, I know this doesn't happen much now, but like in public places or being outdoors with lots of noise, like all of that really picks up on the call and is really distracting. So get yourself some headphones and try to find a quiet room if you can and in a well-lit room and, and set up shop there for your call. You've interviewed people who have been like in public restaurants or like <laughs> public places? Un unfortunately, yes. People have been in cafes, Aww. sometimes in their car, on their phone. And like, I get it, right. right? Sometimes you have to be a little stealthy about it or step out, but oh. yeah. it's, it's still, it's not the greatest experience for the person interviewing you if your phone is like shaking or, you know, you don't have a stand for it. Like you just, you want to make, present yourself in the best way possible and then those right. things you just don't you want to minimize distractions so if you can be at home or in a room and it's kind of calm and not a lot is going on in your background I think that's great um yeah yeah there's a tool called crisp have you heard of it it I minimizes have heard of it. background noises yes I've heard it, it it works like okay I think it depends like obviously they can't get rid of like you know if you're sitting on a airstrip and there's like a plane landing but hopefully no one's doing that because that would yeah. also be weird but weird times you never know yeah you never know <laughs> yeah but yeah I think all of that would be great and then you know be comfortable you know wear something that like makes you feel good you know you don't have to obviously put on a you know 
a tuxedo or a fancy outfit or anything. Unless you want to. <laughs> unless you want to. If, that, if that's your thing, you're, you're right. I yeah. shouldn't hate on, on black tie. Maybe black yeah. tie interviews can be like the new thing. But Totally. <laughs> yeah, just feel comfortable. And, and, you know, I think the thing also is like, making eye contact is a totally different thing on a, a Zoom call, right? Like when you're in person, you're actually looking at a human. But when you're in Zoom, right now I'm looking in my webcam little hole and, but it feels probably like I'm looking right at you. And so it's just kind of a different experience and it's good to practice that because I think it just helps, you know, make a human connection between you and the interviewer. You know, from time to time you spend time actually looking in the camera. I know it feels unnatural because you want to look at yourself or you want to look at the person you're talking to. So kind of fluctuating between all of those, I think is, is a nice, a nice balance. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's why practicing, do you recommend practicing a re, like a remote interview with a friend or someone? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. The more practice, the better. And, and they can give you feedback on like, oh, you kind of sounded tired or like not so enthused. And then, yeah. you know, like, okay, great. I guess I have to amp it up even more. I think also over Zoom, you know, again, since you're missing that body language, you really have to like sell what you have right here to the person you're talking to. So it's a lot of like smiling and trying to, you know, exude energy the best way you can in yeah. this like little frame. And it's, it's not easy, but it's doable yeah. and people are doing it. So especially yeah. if you know you're finding that you're more introverted, like try to save up some energy for that call and then like, just like get as excited as you can and, and let that transfer through the screen. I know it's not totally. easy. Yeah, I'm I'm an introvert, so I 100% understand that <laughs> feeling. <laughs> um, kind of what I don't know if this is like a common uh, question, or I guess I do see it around. People are like, "What do I wear?" There are mixed. You mentioned something you you feel comfortable in. Um, you know, like with more traditional interviews, they're like, "Where?" It's so specific and it's very set. Like, mm. wear business casual or you know. But from my perspective of and meeting different remote or people around the world, remote companies, it's like generally it's just more casual, which makes sense. We're all kind of working yeah. from home. And so would you say just like comfortable comfortability over making that, you know, that impression of what people say, like what you should do is wearing kind of mm -hmm. business casual kind of stuff. Yeah. As you know, as I said, like pick your favorite shirt that you feel really good in and that you think looks good. Like the shirt, you know, you have that one shirt that you wear and everyone compliments you. I hope you have that experience. Put that shirt on. <laughs> That's a great shirt. That's now your yeah. Zoom shirt and use right. that and, and, you know, channel it, look in the mirror, make sure you look good, you know, if you want, and then, and then have it. You don't need to, you know, get super fancy unless, you know, I think even if the company is fancy like you're not needing to dress up at home everyone's at home right now and the, the, yeah. the bar has changed so i think that's fine Very low. yeah and so it's so funny because you're you're interviewing you're doing this interview you're at home which you're it's obviously your most suppose your most comfortable place and where you feel the most safe <laughs> it's your home and yet you're doing this interview that can be quite nerve-wracking um do you have any tips on how you, you you did lightly mention it a little but how someone who is introverted is someone who is a little more awkward at speaking um verbally you know maybe they're more chat focused do you have any tips on just uh, you know for them to feel more comfortable and confident and natural on video yeah i mean again i think practicing zoom with friends zoom with other teammates you used to have or just someone you trust who We'll have a conversation with you and give you actual feedback. Also, you can, you know, have a Zoom call with someone and record it and then watch it back yourself. I think that's a really great way to see how you're you're doing. And you know, you're like, oh, I, I didn't realize I swivel in my chair like constantly. You know, like you don't know some of the stuff that you do. And and so recording it and watching it is I think also a great way to to just always improve. Yes. Yeah. Anything else to add about interview prep? Um, I think also just the last thing I'd say is it's okay to have notes. You're allowed to, you know, take notes, have notes, prep in advance and have it open, right? The beautiful thing about, a, you know, a Zoom interview is no one knows what you're looking at, right? So you're allowed to have your Zoom call on one side of the screen and on the other you have, you know, your Google Doc full of the stuff you want to say about yourself that you've thought of in advance. That's totally great. No one, no recruiter is ever going to be upset that they're having a call with someone who sounds really prepared. Yeah. Just 
you have notes. I'm sorry, you're not hired. <laughs> right, right. Oh, you prepared and you're thoughtful. Gross. Yeah. No, no, thank you. <laughs> um, if anyone else has any questions about um, interview prep, feel free to um, add them in chat or the Q and A dialogue. Um, but otherwise, I think so. You're you've prepared. You've tested out the tech. You're, you've picked out your favorite shirt to wear, you've practiced with friends, you're, you've checked the lighting, you've checked the tools, you're, you know, all those things. You, you turn off all the not your notifications. Um, mm -hmm. So now we're at the interview and let's talk a little bit about that. Um, how, you know, sometimes coming onto an interview can be a bit awkward. So, I mean, generally the hiring manager would like lead the conversation, mm -hmm. you know, how are you doing? Are there some kind of um, common questions that you can kind of prepare for? Yeah, at I the think beginning I mean, of an interview. Absolutely. I think almost every interview starts off with like, tell me a little bit about yourself. Walk me through your recent, you know, career um, places you've worked recently. Like walk me through that. Everyone sort of wants that like little elevator pitch in the beginning to get context as to who you are. So absolutely practicing that for yourself would be a great thing, right? Like you should be able to introduce yourself, kind of give your background, um, what you're you know, excited about, what you've been working on, and then you know, lead it into like, why did you apply for this job? Like, why are, are you talking to me right now? Why is this happening? So you're sort of grounding the rest of the interview in that context. Um, specifically for remote companies and, and remote work, you know, workers need to be really self-motivated and self-directed. And I said this earlier, but you have to be a really excellent communicator in writing and verbally, because this is how you're going to be working with your teammates, usually in Slack or in writing and then over Zoom. So, you know, I think great, you know, remote interview processes, ask questions that try to find out if you're able to do those things. So, you know, you probably could be asked, how do you organize your day and your time? How do you prioritize different project work? Like, you know, they're trying to understand like, okay, if you're at home by yourself, typically, like, what are you doing to manage your time? Like, how are you staying on top of things? Because there's not going to be a lot of micromanagement or handholding at a fully remote company, which is great for a lot of people. A lot of people want that. That autonomy is awesome. Um, I think, you know, we also really like to find out um, about mistakes people have made and like what they've learned from them. And so, and that's different from like, tell me your weakness, biggest weakness. And like, mm. what are you doing to improve it? Like, no, you know, that's a garbage question. But we like to ask, you know, have you made a mistake? <laughs> like, what happened? Like, how did you learn from it? Because that's, we're humans. We're all making mistakes. Um, so I think you learn a lot from people asking that. You know, we also ask, you know, about motivation. You know, like, what gets you out of bed? What are you excited about, about the work? Um, we love to hire people who are really passionate about what they're doing and actually, like, enjoy doing it. So questions around that. Um, also, I think it's really important to ask, you know, how do you approach conflict? Have you experienced conflict in the workplace? What did you do? How did you resolve it? Um, all of these are, you know, trying to assess out, like, how do you work with other people? Um, especially in a, an environment where you're not often getting to see people anymore. We're interacting through Zoom and through Slack. It's sort of a different ballgame than when you're in the office and you can just, you know, go sit and have lunch together and work something out. Uh, yeah, so I'd say, you know, Prepare to be able to explain why you are self-motivated, self-directed, and a great communicator and collaborator. And I think you'll be you'll be in good shape. Have there been any questions you've come or like answers you come across from um, interviewees uh, that made you like, whoa, this person is hired? <laughs> Just some like answering those remote specific kind of questions. Oh, let's see. I don't know if any specific answers come to mind but I think just when people are able to give really like clear succinct answers with a good amount of detail that's when I'm like oh great and you know a lot of people talk about the star method which stands for situation task action and result and it's a great way if you're you know prepping for an interview and you're trying to think of how to answer your questions Using the STAR method is just this lovely little framework to just help your mind remember, okay, if they've asked me a question about, you know, to tell me a time when you did, you know, blah, blah, blah thing, your answer should follow that. So always you're giving a situation, like set the scene for the person, like what was happening, what was the context of this challenge that you worked on, um, then your task. So like, what were you responsible for? What did, you know, were you able, assigned to do for this? Um, and then your action. So like what steps did you actually take to solve this problem or, you know, 
get to work on this project? And then of course, result. So what happened? What was the impact? How did you measure it? And if your answer kind of follows that star formula, hey, that's really nice. It's easy to follow. It's easy for the interviewer to listen to what you're saying and to sort of follow that story arc and then, you know, come away with being like, oh, all right, I know what this person is able to do because they were really clear about it. Yeah, that's really helpful having some sort of framework for how you deliver your responses. That's, that's awesome. Um, what was I going to just ask you there? It com like completely slipped my mind. My brain was going to all these tangents as you were speaking. Um, I'm just thinking of the people who have never had a remote interview before, um, the couple of people here. Um, and I'm also thinking of a friend who recently had a really crappy remote um, job interview. Um, and like what I think there there is what do you do if it's a company that's in a different country and they're you know speaking of like excellent communication what if you're interviewing someone in a different country or vice versa um, and there's like a bit of a language barrier um, and that kind of influences that can influence your perception right so mm -hmm. do you have any tips on that on just like how to you know whether the types of questions you then ask to kind of clarify or you know that kind of thing yeah, I think if you have an interview with someone that felt kind of awkward or unclear, you know, you're allowed to feel pause and be like, you know, let's assess if this is actually a role I'm excited about. But hopefully that's not the only person you talk to. And so if the interview continues, you'll talk to more people and just continue to collect data. You're trying to figure out as much as you can about this company in the same way they're trying to figure out as much as they can about you. It's definitely a two way process. And so continue collecting data, ask questions around, you know, how does the company communicate? What are your communication guidelines? What are the norms? And just continue to uncover. Um, and if you have any concerns, ask them. You're allowed to bring up concerns you have and ask other interviewers those things. And if you want, and if they're excited about you and like want you to make an offer, you're allowed to say, actually, I'd love to meet more people on the team. If they really want you, they're not gonna say no to your request. And if anything, they'll probably be excited that you're that interested. And then you're just, you know, again, you're gathering more data and then, you know, you'll be able to make a decision hopefully based on that. Right. Yeah, totally. Makes sense. And if you're coming from a more traditional background and you're entering the tech um, industry, are there any differences in the style of interviews mm -hmm. that they can come, um, kind of expect? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to, you know, speak for all tech company and interviews, but I think the trends are definitely that tech companies are more casual. Um, you know, certainly when I used to work in education and higher ed, things were way more formal, um, including the dress code. Uh, so I think just the transition to tech is that I think there's just a, a more, a little less pretension, a little more like, let's just get to the stuff, like, let's talk and, and tell me about your experiences. So I think that's refreshing. Um, I wish other industries were like that. Um, so if anything, I think that's a, a nice benefit of if you're able to switch into tech. It's just, I think overall a more relaxed um, atmosphere. I agree. Sorry. Um, it looks like we, no, I just got excited. We have some questions in the Q&A. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to keep answer them as we kind of go or kind of save them towards the end? What do you, it's how do you feel? your call. I don't know. Okay. I mean, you know, there's people here that we can give them what they want right now. Either way. Yeah. Okay. Why don't we take a question here? Kind of, kind of has to do with what we're talking about. So this person, and I hope I'm saying your name wrong or right. Sorry, please correct me if I am wrong. Um, was we'll see you. Um, how do you answer the question? Why should we hire you? Is there something <laughs> specific one needs to say? That's a great question. Yeah. Oh, why should we hire you? Well, you, you need someone to do this job now. Um, I, you know, I think they're, you know, make sure you're looking, you've, you've really studied their job description. What is it they're looking for in this position, in this role? And then be able to point out how you, you've either done those things or you've done similar things, or you've thought about those things and you're excited to take them on and here's how. So you're basically saying this company, your team, you have a need and I have very specific skills and experiences to help fill that need and to you know, actually amplify this team and, and help everyone, and here's why. So I think you know, why should we hire you is again, just your opportunity to sell yourself, to just explain you know, why you think you'd be a great addition to their team, you know, a great value add. 
um, and talk about what you have to offer. I don't think there's like one thing the company is looking for to hear you say, right? There shouldn't be like a right answer to that. I think there's a lot of answers that are great for that. Um, I hope that helps. Yeah, it's, everyone's so unique and what you have to offer is unique and it's like nothing else. So really thinking of your own, focusing on your own uh, strengths, like not, it's like beyond strengths, your own personality and your characteristics and your mm -hmm. kind of like special. Yeah, what do you bring to the table that someone else yeah. doesn't? I think that's, totally. that's a great way to think about it too, you know, and also mm -hmm you've done some research about the company, you know, the problem they're trying to solve or what they're trying to do. And then you're making the case of like, I can help you do that. Boom. That's great. Totally. You're hired. You're hired. <laughs> you're hired. <laughs> um, someone here similarly asks, not similarly, but in the same kind of work in this leg of interviewing questions. Um, I've been asked in several remote interviews, how do you teach yourself new tools since we're, we aren't going to be in person for a while? Yeah, they've struggled with answering that. Yeah, totally. It's a it's a common question. I think that gets to also, you know, trying to see if you're self motivated, self directed, like, how do you do things on your own when you're not, you know, able to sit next to someone to like work on something together. I think the, the first question is like, well, do you do that? Right? Like, how are you improving on your own? You know, once the day is over, or if you have even time during the day in your downtime, like, are you trying to improve? Are you reading blogs and, and books that are related to your field? Are you trying to always get better and like watch other webinars? Like those are all things I think that answers that question. You know, if you're an engineer, are you taking like classes or reading up on other languages or, you know, are you curious about other things and, you know, just going after it on your own? Um, you know, you want to know something, YouTube will teach you, right? Like you don't have to spend even money to like learn certain things anymore it's pretty great but i think they're just trying to assess your curiosity are you are you trying to improve um and, and, and do you have that spirit really so again there's not like a right or wrong i think it's just like they want to hear like great what is something you've done to like demonstrate this you know i guess for me like years ago i wanted to get better at video editing and i just learned by watching youtube demos and tutorials on like how to use final cut pro and there, there's really great tutorials about everything. And, and now, you know, years later, I'm, I'm fairly decent at video editing and it has nothing to do with recruitment and hiring, but you know, they just want to know that you're curious and, and trying to, to learn and grow without, you know, having someone kind of feed it to you. Curiosity is a wonderful trait, I think. Mm -hmm. And any, anyone obviously can be curious. And like when I built my portfolio, uh, when I was, unemployed a couple years ago I was curious to know just to learn new programming languages and I'm not mm -hmm. a coder or anything like that um, but a good friend of mine taught me PHP like he built the skeleton of it and then I then learned and built new pages from that skeleton it was That's awesome. fascinating yeah it took me so long <laughs> and it was hard and it challenged me but it was it's now I can say I, I did that you know yeah um, that's a great example Let's see here, another one with interview questions. Any advice on how to redirect an interview when the hiring manager hasn't asked any questions that relate to the role or only focused on one aspect? I've had a few that they talk more than they ask, uh, or some that are so thrown off by how they're going to hire remote that they forget to ask about the daily work. That's, that's yeah. yeah, I'd like to apologize. I think everyone on this call and beyond has experienced horrible interviews. That's, yeah. it seems the bar is really low and I'd like to just collectively apologize on behalf of, of all people in hiring. Um, but <laughs> I think to me, honestly, if that interviewer E is, is spending all this time just talking at you, especially if they're the hiring manager or potentially your boss, maybe that's not a great place for you to work. Um, I think that just they're not being thoughtful. It doesn't seem like they've planned in advance what questions they wanna ask. It doesn't sound like they're doing structured interviews. So if that's they're doing that with you, who knows what they're doing with the next candidate? Um, it just it just there's a lot. Those are a lot of serious orange flags for me to to orange. maybe you know it's not a hard a hard no, but I would be concerned that they just don't have their stuff together. Um, and I think you're you know if they're just still you know talking more than they ask and you know going on about other things, you can try to just be, bring it back and be like, okay, is there anything else you'd like to know about me? Or like, can I, you know, just, you can redirect and be like, well, all right. So it sounds like you're looking for this. 
can I talk to you more about my experiences if X, Y, Z thing? And they'll be like, oh, all right. Yeah, I should probably do that. <laughs> I probably should learn more your... about you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You like just in your job description. Yeah. Bring up the team. job description. Exactly. Or be like, oh, it sounds like this is a goal you have for this team. Like, can you tell me more about that? But again, the inner, the person from the company should be leading the way. They should really be guiding it. They should have questions already thought out to ask all candidates and should be, you know, setting you up to feel like you're getting, you're flowing through a nice process. And if they don't do that and it's a mess, again, I think that speaks volumes about what else might be going at this company that's kind of a mess. I'll be honest. So that's my hot yeah. take. I appreciate your honesty there. Um, and that's actually a great question. That's a good segue to ask. Um, what are, you know, because not only are you being interviewed, but you are also interviewing mm -hmm. the company. Make sure it's the right fit for both. Um, they should be worth your time and energy as well. Absolutely. Um, so what are some red flags that we can be aware of when you're in an interview? Um, what are some other red flags? That was an orange flag, but what are some red? Yeah. I mean, I think if the interviewer is just, again, like going off on things that aren't related to, you know, your potential to do the job, or if they see that you like went to the same college or you like the same, you know, hobbies and you end up just having like a 20 minute conversation about a hobby. Like to me, that's a red flag. That's full of bias, right? Like if someone's like, oh, Lay, you like Beyonce, me too. And we talk about Beyonce for 20 minutes. Awesome. But they have no idea if I'm able to do this job. And I would be like a little concerned if they want to move me on just because I like Beyonce. Like that, that has nothing to do with recruiting, let's be honest. Um, so like that would be a red flag. I think, you know, if you ask questions about work-life balance and, and they kind of cobble together an answer that doesn't sound real, or, you know, you ask like, okay, when's the last time people on the executive team took vacation? Or when's the last time you took a vacation? And they're like, oh, it's been ages. <laughs> like. I think that's a very telling thing. Um, I, you know, I think everyone should be asking about what are the company's values? Like, what do they care about? What are their priorities? Uh, you know, and I think, think about what's important to you as a person. Like, where do you, where do you want to work? What kind of company do you want to work at? Some people don't really get, I guess, care that much about values and that's fine. There are plenty of companies that also don't care that much about values and that's great. They're there for you. I think if you really care and you're like, I want to work at a company that's like trying to do more than just make profit. Those companies exist and, you know, ask, ask them, the people in the call, your interview about that. And I think it leads to, you know, wonderful conversations. Um, other stuff, you know, I think you should just always ask, like, how is, you know, success measured and, and how are, you know, you know, uh, what am I trying to say here? Like, performance, sorry, gosh, end of the day here, my brain is just oh, yeah. like, whew. Um, <laughs> no but you know, just ask, asking about like performance management, like how is feedback given and received here? Um, you know, how do folks like hold themselves accountable? I think all of those are great questions to ask. And then I think another potential, you know, red flag too, is you should be able to ask someone in a process about the company's retention, right? How long do people mm -hmm. stay at this company? Or like, what are your turnover rates? And you know, they should be able to get back to you, like figure those out and tell you. If they're quite high, that's like another reason to maybe be like, is this a place I want to work? Or ask them, you know, oh, why is this, why is your turnover rate so high? And they can maybe like be like, well, you know, have it, at least if they have an answer for it that feels honest and genuine about, you know, we're going through a lot of change, you know, we needed to refigure other things. Like that's understandable. If they don't have much to say and they're like, yeah, 20% of the company left last year. Not good. Yeah. The number of times I've actually been in an interview and I ask them what their values are and they're like, wow, that's we a should great have those. <laughs> we should have those. Yeah. Values seem cool. Yeah. Hmm. I like that. You're hired. So you can help yeah. us determine those values. I'm like, okay. Um, it's hard. It's, I, I've been in this position too, when you're just, you're kind of in this desperation level because obviously you need to eat and survive and yeah, have a absolutely. home. It can be hard to kind of pinpoint and just be like, Hey, is this, is this the one for me? You know, like I've talked to friends and, and people yeah. around the community too, where there are you, they, in retrospect, you see those red flags in the interview happen and you're yeah. like, Oh, I, you know, they're, they're there for a month and they're like, actually this culture isn't for me yeah. because that can be harder to ask an interview for it remotely. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, those are some great questions to ask about like, and, you know. and what you bring up reminds me too, you know, if you have several short stints on your resume, uh, recruiters notice that and people notice that and 
be prepared to be able to talk about it. Some people might not ask you, but if you were at a company for five months and there was probably a totally valid reason or something happened, you know, prepare that story just to be like, oh yeah, it, you know, we weren't aligned or, you know, what they advertised in the job wasn't actually what it ended up doing and it wasn't a fit. So I left like, you know, there's always a story. So just make sure you're ready with those and you can be honest. And again, I think if you're honest in an interview and it ends up, you know, they don't call you, get back to you or it doesn't work out, that's probably not a company you wanted to work at anyway. You know, like maybe you just dodged a bullet. Totally. Yeah. So that's, I feel like we could talk about this for a, a long time, <laughs> but I'm just I, looking at I the can time talk here. about it all day, every day. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so unless anyone else has any other questions, like what, so you've, you've, you're finished the interview, we're almost, you know, you probably take home a test to do. Yeah. If you, if, you, if you make it deep into a process, usually you'll have like a couple video interviews with people on the team and they'll ask, you know, different, you know, questions to assess your skills, your your values, all that good stuff. And then if you get the take home project, that usually means you're, you're doing well, you're deep into the process. And that's especially, you know, for remote companies, it's another way just to assess skills in a different format than just, you know, through a conversation. Um, for us at Help Scout, you know, every, every role we hire, there's a take home project. And we've been really excited about that process. I think it really helps us sort of assess someone in a, in a complete way. And so, you know, someone's project is never the only reason we hire them. It's this holistic view of like, how are they at every stage? And also how are they on their project? And again, it's another way for us to check their communication skills. A lot of the projects require like, you know, going back and forth. Sometimes we add people to a single channel in Slack and we communicate that way. Just, we try to make them really relevant and mirror what happens if you're working in Help Scout. It's just, you know, we're trying to collect data too. And, and hire someone that will be, you know, set up for success from day one. Um, so yeah, um, and if it's a good take home project, it should be, as I said, relevant. It shouldn't take ages and ages to complete. Like that's not respectful of people's time. Um, if they're going above and beyond, um, they're compensating you for your time. Uh, we do that at Help Scout. You know, it's nothing, you know, huge, but we, it's a token of our appreciation that we know you're possibly already employed or in between and we want to compensate you if you're doing work for us in this context we should give you you know some 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 financial contribution for that um yeah but we know a lot of places don't do that so i'm just trying to say encourage encourage companies to do that um and and just put you know put your heart into it show what you can do this is your moment to show off um you don't have to hold back uh and just ask a lot of questions you know if they send you the project look at it and just ask a lot of questions. A lot of people sometimes think, all right, I have to just take this and, you know, whip up something on my own and then show it once it's done. But so much of this is communicating, right? So asking clarifying questions, you know, digging in further, just shows that you're, the company you're interviewing with, oh, this is how they think. This is how they're starting to solve this problem. Like it, you're just giving them more data to know about you. So those are some more tips, just if you're ever in a situation with a take home project. Great tips. and. Generally, there's some sort of disclaimer that says we're not going to be using this project or task, you know, in our current efforts, like a mark, say it's a marketing thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Like that, that disclaimer should be right. there. We're not right? asking you for work for us. Thank Free you. Work. Yeah, no, yeah. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that happens too. And that, that's it does. horrible. It's so good. As I said, it seems the bar is really low out there. It's unfortunate, but. But it's good to talk about these things to bring more awareness to it. And then I think we like on the, whenever we're looking for jobs, we can ask those questions and kind of, you know, demand a better situation, <laughs> yeah. you know? Absolutely. Um, so what do you do after an interview? So you made it further, you know, you're, you're far into the process. What do you do? Or maybe yeah. even after the first step in an inter sure. interview, what well, do you do? Great, you asked this. I just peeked. The someone, Lorianne, asked a question that's right in line with this about the good old-fashioned thank you note, um, which you know I think has 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 been quite the hot button topic about whether or not you have to do a thank you note. And I don't think it's a essential. I don't think it's a deal breaker. It's one of those things that's like, oh, if you do it, it's nice. And and now what happens is an email. An email is totally fine. You don't have to find someone's physical address and mail them a letter or a card. Like that to me, I think is actually a little over the top. 
Um, but if you know you have you have their email or you have the recruiter's email, a lot of folks relay it to the recruiter and they're like, can you pass this message on to Justine? And everyone's like, sure. But you know, if you're thanking someone for their time, I think if you're going to do it, make it really personal. Say like what you liked about that interview or something the interviewer told you that really stuck with you or, you know, just like show again that you're paying attention, that you're, it really did mean something to you. Yeah, you can just send the email and be like, thank you for your time. It was great. I loved getting to know you more. Thanks. Totally great. Fine. But again, if you're trying to differentiate, differentiate yourself from the pack, you know, drop in something that's really personalized. Um, and it's just nice, you know, who doesn't love to get a personal note from someone thanking them for their time and remembering something they said, like, that's delightful. Yes. <laughs> thinking of people. Um, when is fall and following up, you know, how do you do that without being spammy? When should you do it? Yeah, great question. That. So again, great recruiters should take all this guesswork away from you because they should be telling you, right? They should say, all right, we'll get back to you by X time or we'll know more by early Monday. And then if Monday comes and you haven't, they should follow up with you and say, we're still working on something. We'll get back to you, you know, at X day. But again, the bar is low. Unfortunately, recruiters don't do this. I think if you've had an interview and you hear nothing after, you know, I'd say around a week, you can definitely email the recruiter and be like, hey, just checking in. Uh, I was really excited about this job. I had a great chat with so-and-so and I'm even more excited. I'd love to know about next steps. Totally fine to do that. You know, don't do it maybe the next day, you know, give them some time. They're probably having other interviews with other candidates and also still doing their regular work. So sometimes it takes some time, but you're totally within your right to follow up. It, I hate all the time hearing about people being ghosted by companies. I, I really hate that. And again, apologize on behalf of all the bad recruiters and companies who ghost people. Even if it's a no, just let people know, right? Like just cut ties, be professional about it and like let people move on. I just think the like absence of any closing the loop is so disrespectful to candidates. It happens more often than I've also experienced mm -hmm. that too. And it, I have too, like, everybody has, it's the worst. It's so bad on the, it affects your self, uh, at least it did for me. Like I'm like, what, <laughs> you know, when, well, and, when it's actually, they're just busy, you know? Yeah. And if you yeah. spend the time to prepare for an interview that takes hours of your time yeah. And then just to never hear about it, like, ooh, God, that makes my skin, skin crawl. I hate that. I Companies sh yeah. shouldn't do that. Yeah. Treat people like humans. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And again, I think it does, it speaks volumes about that company. If they aren't responding to candidates and letting them know and giving feedback, I, I would be curious to know how they treat their customers. Right. Right. Exactly. Are they actually people centric? You know, do they actually care about mm -hmm. what's the actual culture that it says a lot? Yeah. Communication. Um, um, so I guess now you see center follow up, maybe a couple weeks later, you receive an offer. <laughs> You're like, you got the job. Congrats. Um, what do you, is it true? I've heard this too. Is it true that um, hiring managers or managers expect the person to negotiate or to come back with a, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, different salary expectation or, you know, whatever terms. Is that true? Um, I don't know if I'd say it's true. I think there's just, you know, a whole school of thought around negotiate negotiation. And it's also another hot button topic. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of it is for good reason, right? I think especially women and, and folks from underrepresented groups have been encouraged to, you know, lean in and negotiate and ask for more because historically they're underpaid. Um, so I totally get where that comes from. And in those instances, like, yeah, absolutely. You should be trying to get yours. Like that makes sense. What I love about what we do at Help Scout is we try to really do this differently. Um, because first of all, we have a, a transparent salary formula. So we've already thought about this and it's mapped out according to, you know, levels in this really clear way. And once you come on board, everyone's able to see it. So there's no secrets about the formula. And because of that also, we in our hiring process you have a chat with someone from recruiting and you talk about salary like early in the process i think that's another thing that just drives me wild is people go through like five interviews and have never talked about money and i'm like how do you expect this to go well if at you're at the moment of offer you're you're talking about money like just doesn't make sense 
So we move that chat up way earlier and we talk about money and we're honest about it. And I, every time I have this conversation, I always try to tell the candidate, I explain our formula, I explain our philosophy around compensation. And I tell them, I'm not trying to play any games with you right now. I'm not going to lowball you. I'm not going to wait for you to say a number and then undercut you. Like, I want to have just an honest conversation around money and we're going to make you the best offer we can. So with all of that in mind, you know, I'm always like, what is a number you would be really excited to see in an offer letter? And it leads to a really great conversation. And what happens there is if they're like, I want $300,000 for this role, I'll be like, awesome. I'm so glad that that's what you're getting somewhere else. We're not going to be able to do that. Like, let's stay in touch. You were great to chat with, but let's stop, you know, because that's, I don't want to waste their time. We're not going to pay this candidate $300,000. Uh, so again, you know, being respectful of people's time, being respectful of the candidates is great. And then, you know, if it's something reasonable, I'm like, great, that's in our range. Like, here's what we have budgeted for it. So I think we're going to be able to make you an offer you're excited about. And so when we go to make offers at Help Scout, we don't negotiate because we're giving you the best we can do right away. Like this is our best and final. And I think often negotiating helps people who are really confident and savvy and often like, you know, pretty privileged to know how to do that. And again, it's not always, you know, folks from underrepresented groups who are often underpaid. Uh, so for us, you know, it's a, we have a very specific way we go about this. For folks out in you know the wild, I would encourage you to negotiate just because I don't think a lot of companies think about compensation this way. And they are probably trying to save money or you know, lowball you. But hopefully you're having a conversation with a recruiter who's being honest, you know, and and open to share the budget and what's in the plan and and know what you're worth. Know what a role in this market and wherever you're living or however they're doing it, know what you're worth, have that data. And then, and then say what you want. And, you know, if you want to add a little padding to it, like, great. And then if they come under and like, that's actually what you wanted, you're in a good spot. Great answer. Great. Great <laughs> Wasn't answer. Short. Wasn't short. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. That, that was really, that was, yeah, that was great. Um, yeah, it touched on a lot there. And it's, I think it's really helpful. Um, do you think it would be helpful to ask that question to kind of like you, Help Scout, you know, does include that in their process, but what if they don't? Like, is, can you talk about it yeah. in your first interview? Can you ask that? Um, I wouldn't do it in a first. I think if you've had two or three interviews and you haven't heard about benefits, you haven't heard about salary, any of that stuff, you should ask the recruiter, hey, are we going to at some point have a call about these things? I'd like to know more. And then maybe they'll say, yes, it's actually coming up next. Or, you know, hopefully it's in the process. If they're like, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> you know, hopefully all the other interviews and things have been great. So you still are interested and then they get on the phone with you and have a conversation about salary, you know, but certainly be very wary if you've had, if you feel like you're towards the end of the process and that call hasn't happened because that's yeah. to me when it just gets kind of messy. Yeah. 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 I've <laughs> been there too. Um, well, I guess we have about six minutes left. We kind of did the format different than what I said at the beginning, but that's totally cool. It's my fault. Um, I got excited. No, I saw the questions. I, like <laughs> I got excited too. I like how it was, it like actually went really nice. Um, just last call, if anyone has any last burning questions, feel free to um, pop them into the Q&A box or chat. Um, anything otherwise, yeah, anything. Even if I'm you have ready. a question about Help Scout, like what is, what is Help Scout's overall hiring <laughs> process, you know? Um, actually, yeah, what is your hiring process, <laughs> just generally? Oh, yeah. Well, you guys aren't hiring process. right now, but you will be, you know. We're, we're starting to get back to hiring. We did take a pause for Yay. COVID stuff, yeah. but we're, we're, we're getting close. Um, pretty much every hire follows this process. Your first conversation is what we call the value add chat. Um, and it's always going to be with the hiring manager and your potential boss. You think that's a great moment to have that first and, and have you as a candidate get a chance to say, oh, like, do I jive with this person? This is gonna be my manager. And all of our managers at Help Scout are really, you know, equipped to assess, like, is this person a potential value add for our team? Um, so if that Zoom conversation goes well, then the next step is what we call the tech screen. So you'd have um, a Zoom interview with someone who'd be like your teammate. Um, and then that conversation gets more into your skills and your experience. Um, and like what you're able to do, like what you've done. And then if that goes well, that's when you have the chat with 
myself or my teammate, Mary, um, and we'd go over salary, benefits, uh, you know, kind of fun culture questions. And after that is the take home project. And then if that goes well, there's a final interview, usually with someone on leadership uh, from our executive team. We think that's a great opportunity for someone to meet someone on our leadership team. And then we ask for three references and then we make an offer. So it can happen in as quickly as like two weeks or sometimes it can you know, take around a month or so, but we try to keep it moving and we try to be really respectful of candidates' time. I was gonna ask you, what, what do you think is the general timeline for hiring you know, all the way to? In a dream world, end, yeah. yeah, a dream world, 30 days. I think that is a beautiful amount of time to make a great decision. Um, I know there are companies that say like, we do it in two weeks. And I'm like, okay, great. That's fine. <laughs> but you know, once you start getting into like two or three months, if it's, you know, that's, that gets very long. Like no one should be in the process for that long waiting to hear or like not sure where they stand. Um, so oh, I've been there too. <laughs> There's a lot of, okay. So it looks like we have a um, couple of questions here. Lauriane asks, how do candidates find the names of the hiring manager? I looked on LinkedIn, but sometimes I still end up guessing on who the yeah. hiring manager is. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, if you're, is, I guess you're trying to find the hiring manager before you have the interview, like in advance, that's tough, right? Like LinkedIn is only so clear. Um, and if you didn't find it, you know, to whom this may concern, you don't necessarily have to find a person or at that point, sometimes you can pick the CEO or co-founders and just, you know, talk to them. like. It just shows you've like found somebody who works here. Um, but, you know, I, I don't lose sleep if someone didn't, you know, address it to Leia or anything at all. Um, but then after you've met with someone, you should know that name. Or again, now you have a recruiter you can communicate with and you can ask them for any name and they should be able to help you out. Awesome. And one last question here. When interviewing for a remote job, Ooh. should one be paid in one's local rate or in the local rate of the interviewing company? Awesome. Yeah, question. this is a another hot button hot issue. Hot topic. Hot, hot yeah. button. Where, and different remote companies have different points of view. We put a big stake in the ground about this. Um, our CEO, Nick, wrote a blog post like just a couple months ago that, you know, equal pay for equal work, essentially. No matter where you live, that's up to you. That's your choice. We pay the same. We don't base it on geography. What we do is we kind of ground everything in the Boston market rate and then pay around that. Um, but you know, it's it's a hot take, right? Like there are some people, companies who are in San Francisco and they'll pay San Francisco rates just to San Francisco teammates. And then if you live in, you know, Ohio, you're getting potentially twenty to thirty percent less for the same role. And we think that's that just seems unfair and and not right. Um, but there are, you know, other remote companies who are like, no, that that's wild. You have to take in cost of living and all these things. But I don't know, for us, again, we just think that's, that's not up to us. We don't, we shouldn't dictate where people live or pay them based on that. That's their business. Um, so, you know, I think you can also ask, that's a good question to ask the company or the interviewer, like, do you pay based on San Francisco rates or London or, you know, knowing where the company has offices, you can ask that question. I think that's great. And then that helps inf you to inform what you should be asking for. So definitely ask. Great question. Whoever asked that. Thank you for asking that. All right. So I guess we're at time here. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to, you know, if you think of them afterwards, feel free to send them to hello at weworkremotely.com. Um, Leia, if you're okay with that, I, I can yeah. pass them over to you. We can yeah. um, I, make that happen. Totally. Message me on LinkedIn or I'm on Twitter. It's just Leia is nobler. Not too hard to find. But yeah, I'd love talking about all this. So send me all your questions. I'm happy to answer. Awesome. Yeah, look into Help Scout. Check out their blog and their Twitter. They're, they have awesome content. Just very, very insightful. And yeah, thank you for everyone for attending and thank you Leia for, for being here and just providing so much information. This was very helpful. Awesome. Um, and look out for the recording um, for our members. We'll be sending that out in the next couple of days. Hope awesome. everyone has Thanks a for good coming. rest of your day. Yeah, yeah. Good luck out there. I wish you all the best in finding a job. Yes, I do too. Take care everyone.